November 15th began like any other day above Naples until another deep, thunderous quake rattled homes and sent a boom echoing through the densely packed neighborhoods. This was just one shock in a relentless swarm beneath Campi Flegre, where ground is now rising 2.5 centimeters per month and the rock cap that holds the system together has lost nearly two-thirds of its strength. Hundreds of thousands live on this restless caldera, with new faults forming under Pozzuoli and no pause in seismic unrest for weeks at a time. As scientists struggle to keep pace with the accelerating changes, no one can say how close we are to a breaking point, only that the rules of risk are shifting and the cracks beneath the city are widening. So what exactly is driving this escalation, and what happens if the next quake is not just another warning? Seismographs across Campi Flegre have recorded thousands of earthquakes since the start of the year. On November 15th alone, the network detected a fresh cluster, magnitudes 2.0, 1.6, 2.1, 1.5 and more. Each event was shallow, most less than 3 kilometers beneath Pozzuoli. The shaking is relentless. In the past five to six weeks, there has not been a single three-day stretch without at least minor tremors. The swarm pulses on, with magnitudes hovering near two and occasional spikes above three, enough to rattle windows and jolt residents awake. These are not distant, silent quakes. Residents describe sharp booms echoing through narrow streets, furniture shifting, and a low, uneasy rumble that seems to come from the ground itself. Beneath the surface, the pattern is changing. AI-powered seismic catalogs have revealed a new fault trace running under the Solfatara and Pozzuoli sector. This fault is not just a theoretical line on a map. Quakes are now aligning along its path, mapping out a zone where the crust is actively pulling apart. The main segment stretches for more than two kilometers, growing both laterally and upward each year. Data from seismic tomography shows fractured, fluid-rich corridors branching out from the fault, while very long period signals hint at resonance inside newly opened cracks. Scientists watch these developments with growing concern. The swarm's persistence, the shallow depth of the quakes, and the emergence of a new fault all point to a system under intense stress. Every small earthquake chips away at the cap rock, the brittle layer that holds back pressure from below. As the swarm continues, the risk is not just more shaking, but the possibility that fractures could one day reach the surface, providing a pathway for gas, steam, or even magma to break through. In the basement labs of Naples, geologists grip pale, porous rock cores, samples drilled from the cap rock that lies above Campi Flegre's restless depths. These are not just any rocks. They form the last barrier between the pressurized world below and the densely populated city above. Decades ago, the cap rock was strong enough to resist the push from below, but repeated cycles of uplift and earthquake swarms have left their mark. Tensile strength measurements have dropped sharply. Where samples from the 1980s could withstand nearly 2.8 megapascals, current tests show some breaking at less than 1.6 megapascals. That is a loss of more than a third of the original strength. Under the microscope, the damage is plain. Networks of microcracks lace through the tuff and ignimbrite, each one a tiny fracture that together make the rock more brittle and more permeable. In the lab, when pressure is applied, these cracks link up, letting water and gas pass through far more easily than before. Field permeability tests confirm what the lab shows. The cap rock now allows twice as much fluid to migrate upward as it did just a generation ago. This mechanical decline is not just a statistic. With every earthquake and pulse of uplift, the caprock's ability to hold back the hydrothermal system weakens. As fluids force their way upward, the risk grows that fractures could coalesce into a continuous pathway, one that could connect the deep reservoir to the surface. The caprock, once a solid lid, is now riddled with vulnerabilities. Scientists warn that if current trends continue, the barrier may not hold. The system is primed for pressure to find a way out, whether through steam, gas, or something far more dangerous. The ground beneath Pozzoli and the broader Campi Flegre caldera is rising at a pace that has scientists on alert. Geodetic bulletins now record an uplift rate of around 2.5 centimeters per month, the fastest since the current crisis began in 2005. 
Over the past two decades, the cumulative rise has reached nearly 1.6 meters in some neighborhoods, a vertical shift that would stand shoulder high on most adults. This is not a slow, uniform swelling. GPS stations and satellite INSAR measurements reveal a patchwork of deformation, with the most intense uplift centered along the coastline and radiating into the city. Each new increment in height is a direct signal of pressure building below, whether from magma, gas, or superheated fluids crowding for space in the fractured crust. The numbers are stark. A rise of 2.5 centimeters each month translates to more than 30 centimeters in a single year, enough to visibly alter the landscape. Sidewalks crack, pipes strain, and the geometry of the coastline shifts as the land is pushed upward. For volcanologists, this kind of deformation is a classic marker of subsurface unrest. The ground does not move on its own. It responds to forces from below, pressurization that must eventually find an outlet. Continuous monitoring by the INGAV network provides a near real-time view of these changes, with each new data point feeding into models that try to predict what comes next. The science is clear. Such rapid, sustained uplift is not a benign process. It is a warning that the caldera is under stress, its caprock and crust being loaded by forces deep underground. The upward pressure is relentless, and as the ground continues to rise, so too does the strain on everything built above it. Official protocols for volcanic emergencies in Italy have always relied on a clear, four-color scale. Green for normal, yellow for increased attention, orange for pre-alarm, and red for full crisis. Each step carries weight, triggering school closures, business restrictions, and at orange, the machinery for mass evacuation. Yet in the past two years, as Campi Flegre's unrest deepened and the technical thresholds for orange were repeatedly met, with multiple magnitude 4 earthquakes and sustained monthly uplift above 1.5 centimeters, authorities stopped short of raising the alert. Instead, a new label appeared in official bulletins and press conferences the label dark yellow. This was not a codified stage in national law or civil protection manuals. There is no published government decree, no formal INGV protocol outlining what dark yellow actually means or when it should be triggered. The term surfaced in regional council meetings, parliamentary hearings, and most visibly in communications from the Protezione Civile. The rationale, according to internal memoranda and statements from top officials, was to allow greater flexibility. Intermediate gradations, dark yellow, light orange, even dark orange, could buy time, allowing for targeted interventions and heightened vigilance without the sweeping legal consequences of orange. Minutes from Campania's regional council, as well as investigative reports in Il Matino and Corriere del Mezzogiorno, detail the calculations behind this move. Civil protection leaders cited the risk of panic, the logistical impossibility of moving half a million people on short notice, and the economic fallout from tourism and business closures. In closed-door meetings, business leaders and local politicians pressed for restraint, arguing that an orange alert would devastate livelihoods and spark flight from the red zone. Scientists and some emergency planners pushed back, Several volcanologists, including those from INGV, argued that the technical criteria for escalation had been met and that bending the rules risked eroding public trust. Critics called the new gradations goalpost shifting, a way to avoid the political and financial cost of acting decisively. Residents, meanwhile, found themselves caught between technical jargon and shifting definitions, unsure whether to prepare for evacuation or carry on as usual. The result is a color code that no longer offers certainty, but instead exposes the fault lines between science, policy, and the daily reality of life above a restless caldera. In October 2023, sirens sounded across Pozzuoli and Bacoli as thousands of residents stepped into the streets for the largest volcanic evacuation drill in Campi Flegre's modern history. This wasn't a routine safety exercise. For the first time, authorities openly called it a volcanic eruption. Rehearsal, not just a Brady season response. More than 6,000 civilians left their homes, joined by over 1,700 emergency workers, school staff, and volunteers. 
Students in at least 25 schools practiced classroom evacuations while families gathered at muster points, clutching ID documents and waiting for buses that would take them to the ports. The drill's centerpiece was the sea-based relocation. At the newly elevated docks rebuilt after years of land uplift, over 1,200 participants queued to board ferries, simulating a mass transfer to Sicily. Port workers managed vehicle loading with ramps adjusted for the changed key heights, a reminder that even the logistics of escape are complicated by the restless ground. Buses and convoys snaked through the city, ferrying evacuees to the waterfront and, in one scenario, to Naples Central Station for a hypothetical train evacuation. Each movement was tracked from a joint crisis center, linking local action with Rome's National Command. The plan assumes a 72-hour warning window, a three-day stretch between the official orange alert and the moment the volcano might erupt. This is the backbone of Italy's emergency doctrine, rooted in the memory of the 1983 to 1984 Pozzuoli evacuation, when 40,000 people were moved in a matter of days. But after action reports from 2023 and 2024 drills reveal the cracks in this assumption. Even with perfect weather and full compliance, the best case estimate for clearing the red zone hovered between 68 and 75 hours. Sea embarkation proved slow, bottlenecks formed at registration points, and communication between assembly areas and central command lagged behind real time. Some residents hesitated to leave, citing drill fatigue and uncertainty about whether this was just another test or the real thing. Experts warned that the 72-hour premise may be unrealistic, especially for phreatic eruptions that could erupt with little or no warning. The drills expose a logistical tightrope. The machinery of evacuation can be rehearsed, but the margin for error is razor thin. For the people of Campi Flegri, the reality is sobering. Every hour counts, and the system's readiness is only as strong as its weakest link. At the port of Pozzuoli, the crisis is measured not in abstract numbers, but in steel and concrete, and in lost hours. Early one morning in 2022, a routine ferry docking turned into confusion. The key, once perfectly matched to the ferry ramps, now stood awkwardly high above the waterline. Vehicle decks no longer aligned, ramps hovered in mid-air, leaving a gap too wide and too steep for cars or trucks to cross safely. Port workers scrambled, improvising with makeshift platforms, but for several days, ferries sat idle, unable to load or unload cargo. Maintenance logs from that week record emergency calls to engineers and a flurry of overnight work to raise ramps and retrofit docking structures. One longtime dock worker recalled those days, saying that uplift here is not just a number, he said he had to watch his ferry stop operating, the link to the city, and that he just waited for them to fix it. It was surreal. The port's disruption rippled outward. Commuters missed work, shipments of food and supplies stalled, and local businesses absorbed the cost. Even after repairs, the new ramps and platforms became a permanent fixture, a daily reminder that the ground itself can rewrite the rules of commerce. For Pozzuoli, the shifting coastline is not just a geological curiosity. It is a force that interrupts livelihoods, demands constant adaptation, and exposes how every centimeter of uplift can translate into real economic loss. The port incident stands as proof, when the caldera moves, so does the fabric of daily life. Pozzuoli sits at the heart of the red zone, home to nearly 80,000 people, with half a million more living within the official highest risk area. The wider Campi Flegre caldera, stretching through the western sprawl of Naples, counts over 600,000 residents, making it the most densely populated volcanic hazard zone on Earth. For families who lived through the 1983 to 1984 evacuation, the memory of hurried departures and months in temporary camps is never far away. One longtime resident recalls the sound of sirens and the confusion as buses rolled in to clear entire neighborhoods. That disruption left scars still felt by their children and grandchildren. Scientists have called for a fundamental rethinking of life above the caldera. Many propose halting new construction and turning the most dangerous zones, especially around Solfatara, into a national park, gradually relocating residents and ending decades of unchecked urban growth. The case for this approach is grounded in hazard maps and risk models. 
Every new building means more people exposed to the next crisis, more lives to protect, and more at stake when the ground stirs. Yet the official response has often moved in the opposite direction. Local governments continue to approve new hotels, marinas, and tourist facilities, with developers eager to capitalize on the region's geothermal allure and proximity to Naples. Construction cranes rise where gas vents burn hotter, and plans for expanded tourism are pushed forward even as scientists warn against increasing the population density in the hazard zone. The result is a collision between scientific caution and economic ambition, with residents caught in the middle, torn between the promise of prosperity and the persistent threat beneath their feet. Mental health clinics in Pozzuoli report surges in anxiety and insomnia, especially among families living closest to the hot zones. For many, the strain of daily uncertainty is as real and grinding as the tremors themselves. History at Campi Flegre is filled with warnings. In 1538, after weeks of trembling ground and bursts of steam, the earth split open near Pozzuoli. Monte Nuovo rose from farmland in just a few days, fed by a magmatic eruption that followed a series of smaller steam-driven blasts. Nearly five centuries later, the 2019 disaster at White Island in New Zealand offered a stark reminder of how little time there can be between warning and catastrophe. Tourists stood on the crater rim as a sudden phreatic explosion tore through the vent, leaving little chance for escape. Both events underline a hard lesson. When the signs are there, delay can prove deadly. Today, scientists and emergency planners at Campi Flegri are racing to close the gap between danger and response. Monitoring networks have grown denser in the last decade, but key blind spots remain. While seismic sensors and GPS stations track the restless ground, the absence of deep borehole strain meters and distributed acoustic sensing arrays leaves uncertainty about how stress is moving through the fractured Cape Rock. The shallowest layers, those most likely to fracture first, are often the least observed. To fill these gaps, authorities have launched a citizen reporting portal. Residents can log anything unusual, sharp booms, new cracks in walls, fresh vents, or sudden changes in springs and wells. Each report builds a neighborhood-scale map of the caldera's unrest, feeding data back to scientists and civil protection teams. This partnership between experts and locals, grounded in the lessons of past disasters, offers a practical way to spot early warning signs that instruments alone might miss. In a place where seconds can matter, every observation counts. Today, more than half a million people live atop one of the world's most restless calderas, while the ground literally rises beneath their feet. As seismic swarms and land uplift accelerate, the line between everyday life and disaster grows thinner. Here, political calculation meets geological reality. For Naples, the risk isn't waiting. It is happening. One tremor, one decision, one day at a time. 